and if you if if you don't if you don't want to have uh, your voices in the video, uh, just send me an email and, and we'll edit it, edit that part out. So uh, I want to make sure you understand that this, the next video, the next recording we're going to have, uh, I may use for my own purposes or Crystal may use it for her own purposes. So if you don't want to be in the video, you can turn it off. Um, but I do want to introduce our speaker now. So let me do that. Having some issues here with the computer. Uh, the new share. Okay, I want to introduce uh, Crystal really quickly. Um, so I want, I want to introduce Crystal Colley. Uh, she is a polymath, what I call a polymath. Uh, the Leonardo da Vinci type person where uh, they're very multi-talented. Uh, she's a producer, vocalist, uh, pre-med student, pre -med student a guitarist for, for, for blues legend, uh, Guitar Shorty. That's how I met her in one of the performances. She's an investor, CEO, speaker. Uh, she graduated from the Musicians Institute. And also she, she even uh, uh, teaches as well. And uh, I really admire uh, her, her uh, basically her, her breadth and depth on a lot of different topics. Um, and so with that said, I wanna turn it over to her and uh, I'll stop sharing at this moment in time, uh, the screen and uh, over to you, Crystal. Thank you for willing to attend this, this uh, session today. Yeah, hi, thank you so much for inviting me. So first of all, I wanna just make sure you can hear me. We can all hear you. Okay, great. Awesome, so first of all, hi everybody. My name is Crystal Colley, as Dr. Goyal just said. And first of all, I just wanted to congratulate you all on completing your course. It makes me super excited to see so many people pursuing a less trodden path, a more difficult path, and a path that can help more people than you know your typical average career. So you make me very excited for the future. So a little bit about myself, uh, first and foremost, I'm a musician, as Dr. Goyal said. I graduated from the Musicians Institute and I've been building a multifaceted career ever since, even though that wasn't necessarily what I had set out to do. When I graduated high school, I thought I was going to go a more traditional path. I was, like many of you, an overachiever. Uh, I was that kid in the AP classes I was trying to get all my college courses done before I had to even go to college. I graduated in the top 2% of the entire nation from high school. Um, I got a couple of scholarships, including a full ride to UCI, which I ended up turning down because I realized that I wanted to use my later teens and 20s to pursue my music career and go to a non-traditional college, which was the Music Musicians Institute. So. Right now, I play four instruments. I'm also a trained audio engineer, and I play for a Blues Hall of Fame inductee named Guitar Shorty, who is right now 82 years old, and he's one of America's last living blues guitar heroes. So if you like blues, check him out, Guitar Shorty. Just go ahead and Google him. He's still touring. Hopefully, after COVID, he will continue to tour. And I'm also the CEO of a tech startup in the cannabis industry. And right now I am actually back in school at 35 years old to pursue my MD, which I'll get around to how that happened a little bit later. Um, but along the last 15 years of pursuing goals that most people thought were unreachable, I've been broke and I've made millions. I've been an underling and I've been the boss. I've been a teacher and I've been a student. I've had a lot of great victories, but I've also had many public failures. I've been on TV multiple times, including Wendy Williams and MTV. I've lived in multi-million dollar houses in the Hollywood Hills, and I've also lived in my car voluntarily, semi-voluntarily, twice. And Dr. Hey, Goyal hey, asked hey, Crystal, me a little bit. Again. Crystal, just a second, your video is frozen. Yeah. Is everybody else also seeing the same issue? Yeah, for now. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Let's see if we can just take a pause and maybe it'll go back. Can you guys hear me anyways? Yeah, we can hear you, but it's been a while like that. Maybe about one minute. Oh, that's not good. I thought it was on my <laughs> end, but I think it's on I can do. You know what? I'll stop. Uh, actually, my let's do this. Uh, can everybody go off? Can you turn off your videos, everybody, so we have better bandwidth? And then, Crystal, you can have your video on. Let's see if that works. Gotcha. You have your video on, Crystal? Just turn it back on. Okay, let's see. It's not showing up in my screen at all. Can you guys see anything? No. No, uh, I can't. Yeah, I can't. Nothing? Um, well, well, we can continue, but we can't see you. For whatever right. reason, your video stopped working. Oh, no, that's not good. You know what? Dr. Goyal, can you do me a favor and chat for about three seconds? I think I can figure something else out right now. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll mute here and uh, I'll talk to you. Okay. And I apologize, everybody. Um, while we're waiting. Yeah, while we're waiting, um, Professor, would you mind sharing the journal articles that our exam questions were based off of? Do you have those, like the links to them or something? Yeah, hold on. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll have to find them. But usually I don't share that stuff. You can find it very easily if you copy and paste some of the wording in the email, um, in the papers in the exam papers, you'll find the article. Okay. Hey, hey, okay, I'm back. How was that? We can see, we you, can now. see you now. We can see yeah. you now. I thought I, I thought I could figure it out. I had to update some stuff. So sorry about that, guys. Yes, uh, it, it's, it, it's easier. So the reason I wanted the video to be present is because it's easier to engage with the speaker. Um, and, you know, I think facial expressions are very important oh, yeah. when I invite speakers. There's nothing so like it. Face to face, if you don't, at least through Zoom is definitely necessary. Right. So if you don't mind backtracking a little bit, because it was breaking up on my end as well. Yeah, sure. No problem. So I'll just do it quickly. So I was just introducing myself, saying that I went to the Musicians Institute instead of going to a couple of regular or more traditional colleges out of high school. I had a lot of options. I graduated from the top 2% in the nation in high school, and I actually got a full ride scholarship to UCI, but I chose to go to the Musicians Institute because I wanted to use my later teens and early 20s to pursue a less traditional path and to pursue my number one passion, which is music. So I've been playing for Guitar Shorty for the last six years now and i don't know what you guys could hear or not so i'll just say if you like blues he's one of our last living blues legends in america he's 82 and still playing and still touring so it's a huge opportunity just google guitar shorty after the lockdown is done hopefully you guys can go see him and me as well um, and i also said i'm the ceo of a cannabis tech startup which i started about four years ago and i'm also now currently enrolled in a pre-medical program at Penn State. And why I did all that uh, will come a little bit clearer later. But along the last 15 years of pursuing goals that most people thought were unreachable, I've had many successes, including making a lot of money and also being completely broke. I've lived in multi-million dollar houses in the hills and I've also lived in my car twice. So I have seen the best of the best in California, and I've also seen what a lot of people call the underbelly of the entertainment industry. I've had a lot of victories, including being on TV multiple times, including MTV and Wendy Williams and TMZ. <laughs> um, but what I really wanna to talk to you today about is something called resiliency. And we all hear this word bantered about resiliency it's important you should have it you should work on it and especially right now during the lockdown that's kind of been a buzzword 
But when I hear resiliency, I kind of, it's so vague that it doesn't really impact me. But I want to break that down and deconstruct that a little bit. So you all are overachievers of society. You're going to one of the best universities in the world, pursuing PhDs, master's degrees, and beyond. I'm sure many of you will possibly get multiple PhDs. So you all are not the people who don't have motivation. You obviously have motivation. You have a lot of motivation. So this is not gonna be a motivational talk because you already have that. What I wanted to think about was what all you have in common. I thought to myself, okay, I'm, I'm doing this talk for overachievers. What do they all have in common? And the one thing that seems obvious to me, even with all your diversity, is that you have focus, you have determination, but I'm gonna talk about something way more important, which is that on the outside, people like you might seem like you have it all together, that you have all the answers, that everything's gonna be fine. And I know that a lot of this type of personality, which you might call type A personality, um, is really good with masking internal turmoil for the world, putting on a smile, you know, getting those good grades even through a lockdown, even through family members going through sicknesses and being able to be that perfect face for the outside world while you might be struggling internally um, to a point where a lot of people right now might be feeling like taking their lives or just giving up on, on your goals. So why am I saying all this? I'm sharing with this, sharing this with you specifically because I understand that just because you have everything together on the outside does not necessarily mean that you have everything together on the inside. And research shows that often the higher your income goes, the higher your stress goes, and the less you may be taking care of your inner well being. And I know that the one thing that experts say is the biggest factor in having true resiliency and true self-confidence, not just on the outside, but actually feeling it and knowing it on the in inside is to figure out a way to know that you are enough, that you are enough right now, even if you didn't pass the class, even if you didn't graduate, even if you never even went to college. And I know that to us, that might seem kind of like a crazy thing because our self-worth is often tied to our achievements. You know, if I don't make a six-figure income, then I'm not enough. If I don't get into XYZ PhD program, I'm not enough. If I don't get this husband, this wife, this girlfriend, this boyfriend, this club, this whatever it is, that you're not enough. And it's to a point where experts are showing that many highly successful people have what's called I'm not good enough syndrome. They've actually named it now. So the problem with being an overachiever is that often people around you might miss the signs that something you might be doing is not necessarily out of a feeling of joy and abundance, but possibly out of a sense that no matter what you do, you're just not good enough. That you're not good enough on your own, without the money, without the certificates, without the degrees, without the cars, without the friends and the houses and the awards and the accolades. But my question to you is this, while you're running so fast, when will you ever enjoy it? When will you actually decide, okay, I can enjoy this. Okay, I'm enough. Okay, I'm okay. Instead of that constant running after the feeling of, I'm good enough. Okay, I'm better. Or even a competitive feeling of, I have to make more than this person, or I have to get this promotion to be good enough. When will you decide? Is it going to be 
after you graduate this program? Is it going to be when you, comp- you know, get your dream job? Is it going to be when you get your dream family? Is it going to be when you make $200,000 a year, 300, 400, a million? I actually watched this documentary about Paris Hilton and she has the I'm not good enough syndrome so badly that she truly, it seemed in the documentary, that she truly believed she would not be good enough until she had $1 billion in liquid cash. She actually said that she didn't want to have kids until she saw $1 billion in her bank account. And we all know, well, that's obviously crazy. People might say, well, that's crazy. She's crazy. She's thinking crazy. That's not true. But within her own mind, because the people around her are billionaires, she knows a lot of people who are billionaires. She knows a lot of people who are almost billionaires. So to her, in her world, in her microcosm of Paris Hilton world, right, she has to make that billion dollars to feel good enough. So I'm here to tell you that even if you were living in poverty and below poverty, guess what? You're good enough. You're good enough. And science has also shown that if you can actually feel that and know that regardless, guess what? It impacts all of the things that you are doing. It actually helps you to feel happy and achieved right now. If you can get that feeling now and detach it from those achievements, you'll actually achieve more, which is kind of counterintuitive. So then the question becomes, well, how do I do that? If many of you or some of you already feel good enough, well, you know what? Go drink a margarita because this talk is (laughs) maybe not for you, right? If you've already figured out how to feel good enough every single day and detach your self-worth from your achievements. Well, I'll give you my phone number after this talk and you can call me and give me some tips. But for many of us who still struggle with that, the answer to that is, if you weren't good enough, you wouldn't be here right now. So my answer to that is, to become grounded in what you've already done. So when you get that little voice that wants to tear yourself down or you want to listen to your critics and listen to the people who don't have your best interest in mind, people who probably don't even really know you or just know you on paper or in passing, ground yourself in what you've already done. You can look back and know, wow, I got into UCLA. And cognitively, you can settle those voices by just pure logic. (laughs) Logic first, and then the emotions will follow. And for me, I started on this journey by one day becoming so sick of my own self and so sick of the things that I was telling myself that finally enough was enough at one point. I struggled with insecurity so bad to a point where I had to go to a rehab program with uh, alcoholism. So I've struggled with alcoholism for more than 10 years. And for me, the alcoholism was from the not good enough syndrome. On the outside, I looked wonderful. I looked like I was, you know, doing everything amazing and everyone loved me and my, you know, my life was so amazing but I was using the alcoholism to escape my own thoughts and to escape the things that I was telling myself. And finally, literally one day, just enough was enough. And I did what I call standing in the burning room. I finally said, I can't live like this anymore. I had been to rehab. I had been to jail a couple of times because of alcohol. I had ruined relationships. I had Um, There was a couple of times where I dropped out of classes because of alcohol, lost jobs because of the alcohol. But like I said before, all of that was because of the I'm not good enough syndrome of myself, you know, trying to escape the voices in my head. And I finally got out of that by standing in the burning room, 
meaning when I would have those bad feelings and those thoughts of, oh, you know, this guy dumped me or this person said I'm stupid or, you know, this boss wouldn't promote me or whatever thing that I was ruminating on instead of running and escaping and going, you know what, I'm just going to drink because when I drink, guess what, it all goes away. Instead of doing that, I finally one day said, you know what, I'm just going to sit here and sit in the burning room and burn. And what I mean by that is just let, just face it, just face myself. Let whatever horrible feelings happen, dead sober, without the alcohol, and just face it and to figure out solutions to my problems. Problems meaning those voices in my head and those past bad past experiences, whenever I would have those thoughts coming up, I would look at each one and go, you know what? I didn't get that job. But the solution is I'm not dead. I can still look for another job and I'm looking for more jobs now. Boom, that one's knocked out. Problem, bad thought in my head. Don't run to alcohol, don't run to drugs, don't sleep, don't just, stand there in the burning room and let it burn. And after a while, actually not that long, only about maybe three weeks of doing that, I finally was able to go, hey, wow, I can handle this. I can handle the bad thoughts by being active. So I'll ruminate, but continue to, to be active and doing my problems and solution method, which is think of a problem, think of a solution, think of a bad thought, counteract that bad thought with, well, you know what? I didn't make it through school the first time, but I'm not dead. I'm gonna sign up again tomorrow. Just keep knocking them out and knocking them out. So standing in the burning room, and I know I'm talking for a really long time and I kind of got off track <laughs> of what I thought I was gonna say. Um, so I'll wrap it up now. Um, let's see here. So my message to you today is you're already successful. You're already enough. Simply because you're here and alive right now, you are inherently worthy and valuable, whether or not you achieve great things, or even if you do absolutely nothing with your life. And if there's anyone or anything in your life that ever makes you feel anything different, you can know there's something wrong with them and not you. If somebody's trying to make you feel like you have to do something in order to be good enough, or you have to have a certain status to be good enough, there's nothing wrong with you. There's something wrong with them because no decent human being with the depth and soul would really actually believe that because she or he doesn't make, oh, they don't make $100,000. So they're not, you know, they're not good enough. No sane, healthy human would ever think that. So if someone's making you feel that way, you can just look at them and go, wow, that's sad. Maybe one day they'll get to a point where they judge people on their character and their merit instead of all of those outside accoutrements. I want you to take a few minutes each day, be by yourself with the phone off, sit in a quiet place, take out a picture of yourself when you were a kid, like an actual physical photo and look at it and say to that kid who still lives inside of you, say to that kid all the things that you need to hear because you deserve it. It's my wish and my blessing that you can start living your life as an expression of your joy and inherent value and not just as a pursuit of success. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate this speech. Um, very, very, very important for everybody to hear. And I do want you, a lot of people that take my courses, um, they usually going through a lot of stuff and some others are not, but trust me, life is a journey. and you're gonna encounter things later on. So just remember the words that she's spoken. I don't wanna to add to what she's saying. So anybody uh, has questions, anything you wanna talk about? Uh, you should have your drinks, we succeeded uh, as a team.
in this class you can share you can share your videos if you want again um mine is working i think i know you had some questions here for me i can jot them off real quick because i had some good thoughts yeah. on those if you want yes yeah so some of those questions came from students that will email me um and i thought maybe you can give it a shot uh, they come from uh different people in this class and the other class so uh yeah so why wouldn't do that sure so Dr. Goyal emailed me some questions that you guys had. And the first one was, what approaches one can use to be creative in problem solving? And I know that this has something also to do with analysis paralysis, where you freeze, whether that's in a work application, so whether you're doing, you know, you're problem solving at work, or you're trying to problem solve with more difficult tasks in life. And my number one thing that I wanna say is, if you're ever faced with something where you're having analysis paralysis and you just feel like there's nothing I can do and you're freezing, distance yourself from yourself. Take yourself out of yourself, sit next to yourself like that. Physically try to envision yourself as someone else looking at yourself. So what I do is if I were my own life coach, what would I tell myself right now? And giving yourself that little bit of distance is key because when you're in the forest, you know, the, the saying, you can't see the forest for the trees. You can't see the forest because all the trees around you, you can't make a clear decision because you're too close to the problem. So if you can somehow get some distance and look at yourself as your own therapy client, that can often help. Um, or another thing that can help is getting an outside perspective from someone who does not know you personally, who does not know you personally. So not family, not friends, not your best friend, not your sister, not your brother, not your parents, even though they mean well and they love you, sometimes it's better to go to someone for advice who specializes in the area that you are having a problem in. Someone who doesn't know you and doesn't have a vested interest in whatever you decide because they're completely objective. So I hope, I hope that helps. I do that a lot. I think if I was my own therapy client, what would I tell myself to do right now? That, that that's that's awesome and anybody wants to contribute to to that question because uh, i know i sometimes you know get into analysis paralysis myself and a lot of you do too um nigel ben gerber any any of you want to comment shiva from india or victoria mathematicians anybody wants to comment Did i you guess get the analysis paralysis yeah i guess i would just say i definitely felt a little bit of that especially like facing down this exam in the beginning my um, you mean my exam for this course yeah yeah like at, at first it seemed like just totally really hard and not doable um i think that crystal your advice there to kind of look from the outside would have been helpful to hear 10 days ago or so um because i think <laughs> sorry like, guys no it's fine it's fine um but um yeah it's kind of just understanding like you can do it if you just you know don't stress out too much about it i think is also an important good point and sometimes yeah. you have to just start walking and something good happens yeah anybody another, else another good thing is do a worst case scenario in your head so worst case scenario i fail okay what happens then hmm i take the class again is it the end of the world no, it's not. It's not. Another good thing is do while you worry. So while you are worrying, don't just sit there. Do, just do, 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 do. Because you can stress out 
you can think and ruminate and worry and stress out while you're doing stuff, right? <laughs> that took me 35 years to figure out that I would literally just sit and stress out. And then finally, I was like, oh my God, what, what am I doing? I could be doing laundry and stressing out. I could be getting the paper done, actually typing with my fingers while ruminating in my head. So when your analysis paralysis, just do, just do, do, start doing, 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 and think while you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's an excellent advice. In fact, uh, in when you go to industry, and that also applies to life in general, you're going to encounter that a lot of us are engineers and we want everything to be planned out perfectly. But the bottom line is you will not make much progress if you don't start moving. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like I said earlier, um, if you don't start moving, you won't make progress. You have to move so you can learn. It may not be the right path, but eventually you will get there. Anybody else, uh, Nigel, uh, anybody wants to give advice that you've experienced? No, I don't really have anything to contribute. I can keep going with these questions. Yeah, let's go. What's, what's no, the next one? Okay, okay. So how to be comfortable with yourself given that we can't interact as much with others right now. And I kind of touched upon that a little bit by standing in the burning room, but one of my favorite human beings on the planet is a yogi named Sadhguru from India. Look him up, Sadhguru. And I'm not even going to try to answer this with something original from me. I'm just gonna take what he said and tell you guys because it's what I think of all the time and how I'm able to be comfortable all by myself in a room, really by myself for weeks, I'm totally fine. I used to not be. And he said something really funny, but really true for this. How to be comfortable with yourself. Well, if you're in a room all by yourself or doing an activity all by yourself and you're having a bad time, well, you must be in bad company, right? So if you're by yourself and you're not having a good time, that means you're the, you're the one that's the bad company. So make yourself a great person to hang out with by yourself. Why would you ever be uncomfortable by yourself? Because you're looking to other people to make you feel good, to give you compliments, to assure you that everything's okay, that you're okay. But what I'm telling you is you can do that for yourself in your own head. You don't just have to, you don't have to allow that nasty voice, the anxiety voice, the worry, stress voice. You don't have to just go along with it. You can actually stop that and say, hey, wait a minute. I want to be a good person to myself hey, wait a minute, I would never say something like that to someone on the street. So why am I saying it in my own head? You know, oh, I look fat today. W would you say that really to someone that you met at Starbucks? Hi, you look fat today. What? Are you, you're, or you're a horrible person. So know that you're a good person. You are a good person. And guess what? Good people have depth and soul and don't talk to other people like that because they don't believe that and don't talk to yourself like that. Say something that you would actually say to someone, hey, your self-worth is not dependent on your weight. Whoa, yeah, you can say that to yourself. Hey, your self-worth as a human being has nothing to do with how you look. And I think the truth, when someone said, the truth shall set you free, I think that's what they meant. When you say truthful statements that you know are true, keep saying those things to yourself when you're by yourself and little by little by little, you'll become that great person to hang out with. And then little by little, you'll want to hang out with yourself because you'll know how to soothe yourself and how to entertain yourself even without a phone. There you go, from Sadhguru. Oh, 
I can't hear you for some reason. Can you guys hear me? There we go, yeah. You guys are quiet today. I'm saying to my students that they're quiet today. Do you guys know Sagaru? No, I'm not familiar. No, I can't say I've ever heard of him. Okay. All right, what's the next question? Let's see. Sorry, guys, it's a celebration where we're listening to the speakers. I hope you have popcorn and you're drinking something. Oh, yeah. How to focus on pursuing your passions and optimizing time to get to your goal despite what others tell you. How to focus on pursuing your passions and optimizing time. Okay. So, so, so that question came and I, I don't want to identify the person, but uh, the, the, the issue is that a lot of students uh, at the graduate level pursuing PhD and whatnot have family and they have a job plus they're trying to get a PhD plus they sometimes have to work a second job to even continue forward in life. And so that was the, that was the motivation behind it. Actually, you cut out again. Can you say that one more time? I Sorry heard family, so, they have a lot of, they have family. So, so there's a percentage of students that, that the graduate level have to take care of their family. They have a job, a regular job, plus doing a PhD, plus they have to deal with other issues beyond that. And so, yeah. and then my, these courses tend to be very hard at UCLA. So, so you know, basically that's where that, where that question was coming from. Sure. So I struggle with this a lot myself because I always have about 10 different projects going on, you know, different businesses I'm trying to start up and uh, partner up with people. And then I have my music career. And then on top of that, I'm trying to be a doctor. <laughs> so I get that. And what I would say to you is two things. Number one, you have to prioritize, prioritize it, prioritize the important things. And when you're pursuing really big things like a degree with family, you have to prioritize. And it, I, I don't mean you have to cut out certain things. I don't mean, oh, you can only have three priorities or four or five. You can have a hundred if you want to. But what I'm saying is you have to know those big chunks. So for example, me right now, my number one priority, and this was a struggle for me, my number one priority right now has to be the degree. It has to be the degree. So the degree to me is like a big chunk up here. Then below that chunk, my other priority, my second priority is my music career. And then below that is health, exercise, you know, of course, family. I don't have children, so that can allow me to have to put that maybe third. Um, you know, and then down, 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 down the line. And I have literally like 10 projects going on. So below that, I'm like, okay, fifth priority is the tel the telemedicine clinic. Sixth priority is maybe a teaching, um, you know, maybe a school, then down, 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 down the line. And those lesser priorities that are down on the list, you have to be able to forgive yourself when you didn't hit that lower priority that day. Forgiving yourself is key. You know, if you're pursuing a degree and you have family, if you have dirty laundry in the corner for two weeks, look, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Is it ideal? No, but don't add on top of your stress by making yourself do every, every, every tiny thing. Look, the, the laundry is not a priority. The degree is the priority. As long as they have something to wear, look, I'll get to the laundry, right? Um, another thing is buckets. So I, I said this before at a different speech, but a lot of people don't know that Einstein had like 25 different projects going on at any one given time. Of course, we all know Einstein from the theory of relativity and of course, right? But he actually had a bunch of little tiny side projects going on that were like other theories and papers and projects and art things and businesses and all kinds of stuff that was going on. And the way that he organized it was in literal physical buckets. So, or baskets rather. So his wife actually helped him to get these baskets 
actual baskets, put them all in a room, put labels on the baskets, and then whatever pieces of paper went along with this theory or this theory or this art project and this thing and this thing, he had to put the papers in the baskets and keep them organized. So number one, prioritize. Number two, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself when I didn't do the dishes for a month. Well, you know what? Oh, well, right? Did anyone die? No. Okay, well, I'm trying to be a doctor. So, oh, well, forgive yourself. And then ask for help. That's huge. I know that seems maybe obvious, but especially for women, we often don't want to ask for help because we feel like, oh, I don't want to burden other people with my problems or I don't want to do... It's okay to ask for help from other family members, or it's okay to delegate. You know, um, there's such things as fluff and fold services for a very low cost, probably less than you would even believe you can have someone else do your laundry. Um, and then of course, another thing is you have to be organized, 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 organized. It's so important and streamlining. So when you see those trailing things down at the bottom, bottom, bottom of your priority list, like, I don't know, let's say you have a, pri you have a goal that you want to paint someday. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. It could be painting. It could be starting a musical instrument. It could be whatever it is learning how to kayak or something. Look, if, if you haven't done, if it's on your list, but you haven't done it for three, four or five years, it's okay to cut it off the list. It's okay to go, yeah, you know what? I really want to do it. I do, I really want to, but you know what? I got to strike that thing off. The list is not happening right now. Free yourself up mentally by taking some of those bucket list stuff or goal list stuff, just, just take them off for now. <laughs> that, that's really cool. And I really appreciate that advice. Uh, I struggle with that myself a lot. I have like 10 things going on, uh, but yeah, we all do. Well, some of us do. <laughs> um, anybody wants to comment on that point or the quiet people? I think I, 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 I gave you such a hard exam that your brain got fried. <laughs> Is that what happened? I would love to hear any problem that any of you have that's stressing you out and you wish you had an objective voice. This is the time where you're going to have an objective voice. Any analysis like my, paralysis. I feel like my problems are over now that I finished that test. <laughs> Wow, good. Oh, you mean my test? Yeah. <laughs> my test was easy, guys. You know. <laughs> Didn't feel that way. Well, let, let's go around the room and see if anybody has comments. Yalda, do you have comments? Wendy? Victoria? Anything you guys want to contribute? Um, not any specific comments, but I can relate to many of the points that you all mentioned. Thank you. Thank cool. you. Appreciate, appreciate speaking up. Bob, are you there? Yeah. Um, Anything that, resonates with you? Anything resonates? Uh, I definitely, the, the imposter syndrome thing, uh, definitely got that in like the very beginning of this quarter, um, especially with like a lot of the really hard topics, you know, coming from like undergrad to graduate, uh, the transition I definitely thought was like, it wouldn't be as tough, but I definitely got that you know, hammered in the very beginning of the, of the quarter, but you know, it was, it got easier. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, 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 and uh, as we're going through this stuff, uh, you know, just keep in mind that life is a journey. We're learning, right? Uh, one thing that has helped me a lot is called the Franklin Covey approach, which is to identify what is important, what is urgent, what is important and not urgent, what is urgent and not important and what is not urgent and what is not important. A lot of people are going to demand your time all the time. And you have to learn how to categorize those things and, and say, okay, you know, that's not urgent or important. I can get to it later. Uh, that's one thing that's helped me a lot 
because I'm a, I'm a pleaser. That's my personality. I want to please people. I want to make people happy. Uh, and that, that's an issue for me, and I know that. So I have to constantly remind myself what the priorities are, and that's one approach that people use. It's called the Franklin Covey approach that I, I suggest that you look into. Anything else? Chris Underhill, you're one of my, you came, you came hard, you know, you came really good in this class and you performed the best in this final exam. So any, any comments? I'd like to see your video, Chris. You had a cool background. Oh, sorry. I, um, I uh, had to uh, close my laptop lid uh, for a sure. second. Um, um, yeah, no particular question for me. Uh, yeah, I just I would say thank you for sharing. Um, and thank being you. Open and everything. Um, I think a lot of people that struggle with issues are you know self conscious that they're the only one. I've known many people, um, and I, I think this is helpful for everyone. You know, open and honest. So uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Great. Good. Anything else, Crystal? Anybody else wants to comment on anything? Um, you know, have really beautiful, happy holidays coming up. Take some time to meditate, you know, spend time on your, you know, with yourself, like Crystal was telling us. I think it's a good idea. And, and I'm honored to have you, each of you in my class. You guys do excellent. Really good. Shivam, you, you're, you're, you're in, a, in India working from there, and it's cool that you're able to maintain yourself attached to this class, Shivam. Are you there, Shivam? Yeah. Thank you so much for staying you know, in touch and, and working hard to, to, to get this course going. You know, we needed each of you to be part of it. So. Okay, anything else, Crystal? There's some last thoughts here. The course was very good, I learned a lot. Sagari will be the last person. What, what are you saying, uh, Shiva? I, I can't hear you. You're writing something, but I cannot read it. Shivam, I think you're having, I think you're having a connection issues and you wrote something, but I cannot r read what you wrote. What did you say, Shivam? Uh you can't read it? Not right now. Let me see if I can open it. Okay, Sagar will be the last person for whom I will take any advice. That's very nice. Oh, no. It's the last person you, you will not take advice from me. Is that what you're saying? I think he, you know, disagrees a little bit about some of the, well, somebody I mentioned, Sadhguru, but you know what? That's okay. We all have our own opinions, and I completely respect everyone's opinions on anything. But I would say just for in closing that it's okay and you should be experiencing problems in life. A lot of us think that we don't want any problems. You know, we want everything to just be always great all the time. And let me tell you something, don't want dead people's problems because the only people on earth who don't have any problems are dead people really think about that a lot of times when i have problems i think to myself crystal you don't want dead people's problems because dead people are the only people who don't have any problems if you're alive that means you have problems problems is an indication that you're alive and breathing. Any organism on earth that is alive and breathing encounters problems. But instead of even saying problems, I don't even like that word because it's not really accurate. And linguistic um, associations are very important in problem solving. Think of them as challenges. Every single day, Every single organism on the planet, including grass, ants, birds, trees, worms, everything that is alive has challenges. 
a challenge is just the next step that you need to do to live. And when you think of your problems like that, they become more manageable. Instead of saying, oh my God, I have this problem and how do I do it? And, and just focusing so much on that problem, think, okay, there's a situation. It's very challenging, but I'm up for that challenge. I'm smart enough for that challenge. I'm mature enough for that challenge. I can handle that challenge. I'm smart enough for that challenge. I got into UCLA. I got into UC USC. I know I'm smart. I know that I can handle this challenge. When you start speaking those powerful words to yourself and looking for those solutions, just look for solution, solution, solution. And you start laser beaming, focusing on those solutions, even writing down those solutions, you'll see that until the day that you're in the grave, you'll be able to overcome those obstacles. You will. I promise you will. That's it for me. <laughs> thank That's you awesome. so much for yeah. listening to me rant. <laughs> no, no, thank you so much. And, and, and I actually appreciate a lot, Shivan, what you said there, because uh, when people speak to us or I speak to people or somebody, I hear something in the radio or um, I hear something anywhere, uh, I, I think it's good that we apply critical thinking. So I appreciate that. And, and you should take whatever you want to hear and whatever you want to take. So that's awesome. Uh, so guys, you know, thank you so much for being part of this. Um, I, I, I'm going to miss talking to you guys. Uh, I talked to you a lot of you on the phone or through Piazza. So thank you for being engaged in this course. You guys were my best class ever. Have a great, happy holidays. And uh, hasta la vista. If you want to take 168, um, you can sign up. That'll be March. Uh, that's when I'll be teaching that. 256B was supposed to be taught in the winter, but um, the university canceled it. So it's not going to be taught. I may teach it in the following year. Uh, it's, there's potential for that. Anybody else want to speak up before we go? Well, we don't uh, go on mute and give a round of applause to everybody for their hard work. That was really hard work. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Professor. Thanks, Crystal, for speaking to us. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy Thank holidays. You holidays. Bye. Thank Bye. you. You too. Bye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.